Welcome back to the walkthrough on creating custom ZMech animations in 3ds Max for Unreal 4. In this video, I'll take you through the process of creating a new animation sequence in 3ds Max. In our source files, under Max Scenes, let's open the ZMech Animate file. This is one you primarily will use for animation. So the first thing I want to point out in this file is just something about the organization on it. And that's up here under the Manage Layers. Um, everything in this scene is divided up into two groups, uh, or two layers, and we have the cat objects, which is all of the rigging components, and these are the pieces that you actually animate in order to make the character move. Um, and you also have the meshes group, and the meshes are actually frozen so that I can't click on any of those. Um, if you want to do and make any changes to the actual mesh, um, you'll have to go in and unfreeze those parts in order to access them. So with that set up and the mesh is frozen, um, I'll hide that and um, let's uh, let's animate something. Let's uh, So in order to start animation, let's click on this triangle arrow shape and you have to go into the motion tab here on the side and here you have all of your cat animation controls. So the first thing to notice is this green arrow circle thing. Um, if that's off, that means that you're in setup mode and you're doing things you don't want to be doing. So green means animation. And you already have a layer available um, that you can start animating on. You can create new layers. Um, right now it's an ABS layer. That stands for absolute, I think. It's basically a what you see is what you get animation layer, where if you move something, that's where it is. Uh, some of these other ones, like this L and W, those are local and world space. They're good for adding animation onto existing animations. Like if you have a walk cycle and you want the guy to wave in the middle of the walk, you can add those. Um, and then this guy down here is a special thing that we'll get to in just a little bit because it's really cool. Okay, so we, we have our animation layer. Let's start by turning on auto key so that we are animating. And uh, let's start by, I'm gonna do control A to select everything and I'm going to just set a keyframe at the beginning. With my key set on all my objects, I'm going to hold Control alt and right-click and drag on my timeline to set my end time around 40, so that I have 40 frames to work with. And I'm going to Shift-drag that first keyframe on everything to the end. So what this effectively does is if I move anything, then I know that it's going to start in my original pose do my animation and end in that same pose so that my animation loops so that it plays and it'll continuously do that so when I load it into my game it'll loop seamlessly but we don't want him to do that let's have him do something a little bit more useful let's take his pelvis here and let's uh, let's move that down so that he's kind of sitting and then let's take his arm and rotate it up. One of the cool features about using the cat rig is that it's really adaptable as far as how you can use it. Um, so you'll notice there I used the arm and rotated it in order to get his arm up, but you can just the same click on his hand and use the move tool to actually pose his hand however you want it. So you can really get him into the pose that you want very easily. So I'll move that arm up take that out and then we're going to move this up and we'll rotate his hand out and we'll have him be looking up into the air so kind of let's tilt him forward a little bit so we'll put his tilt his chest up he's got to have good form he's not a slacker and bring his head up a little bit more and we'll also bring his shoulder shoulder things up so he's not clipping through. Okay, that looks pretty good. So then let's, uh, so now he smoothly comes down and up, but I want him to hold on the bottom a little bit. Right now he's just doing this little squat thing, and I want it to be clear that he's actually holding a little pose. So I'm going to go about to, I don't know, three quarters of the way through, and select everything. 
Oh, and also on this frame, I'm actually going to do a set key on that pose for all the objects so that everything on him is keyed at that uh, frame. So I'll hold shift and drag that one over here. So now he goes down and he holds that pose, but he just sticks there. He doesn't look very good. So I'm going to take him and I'm going to say that over time he goes down a little bit. It's hard for him to hold the pose. Um, his hands do a little bit of wiggle. And I'm actually going to offset those a little bit just to kind of keep it from being all on the exact same frame. And then let's say it bumps a little bit. His head does a little thing. And then let's say that his legs go, come out a little bit as he kind of struggles to hold the pose. And then we'll bump him all just a little bit more. All right, let's check that out. So let's play. So now he goes down and he kind of holds there for a little bit and then he comes back up. And on the way back up, I think I want him to, as he pushes himself up, I want his body to kind of reflect that. So let's put his chest down and let's put his head down a little bit later so that as he comes up he really pushes himself up and then straightens out. Ooh, that doesn't look good. That's way too fast. Let's bump this back a few frames. There we go. It's not great, but it looks a little better. So now he goes down. I'm going to move this all these guys over a little bit. There we go. So now he sits there and then comes back up. I'm going to do a quick save as, and I'm going to save that. Um, I'll just save it as a test. Yoga pose. OK, so that's just in the max. Uh, that's not exported to Unreal yet, um, but I'll go over that in a later video. Um, for now, that's all we want to do is just create our animation and have it looking good and ready in 3ds Max. Let me quickly load the, I'm going to reset and load the uh, ZMech animate file again because I want to show you something that you can do that's really cool. Um, you can actually use the cat rig to generate a run or a walk cycle for you and you have a lot of control over the different aspects of what that looks like. So let's go in here um, and go into our motion tab and under the layers here, let's create a new layer with this little running guy. And that's the cat motion layer. And you can see as soon as I put that on, my guy's walking. Um, that layer overrides the layer beneath it. Um, and it has a, a built-in walk generator that it's currently running. Um, in order to edit it, we can click this little green paw print button. And in the cat motion preset here, there's a two legs section. So if I double click on that, I can get in. And these are the ones that are available for the um, the cat rig. So we have a character creep. So if I double click on that and load it into our existing layer um, and I play that, you can see he's creeping along, which looks completely inappropriate for our model, but it's still uh, you can you can use it and work with it if you have something that you want to do. Uh, likewise, we have game character run. Let's load into an existing layer. All right, now he's chugging along. And then we can try out the walk. Pretty good. And then we have this goth girl walk. Yeah, looking pretty gothic. Very iconic walk. Um, so let's go into game character run. Load that into an existing layer. Alright, so now he's, uh, he's hauling. He's doing, oh, he's looking good. Um, but there's a couple things. You'll notice when the timeline gets to the end, it pops. It's not actually um, looping the way that we have it. What we need to do is go into our globals here. And we have a start and end range. Um, but the important numbers are here in these stride parameters. Uh, these are kind of the controllers for how he runs. So the max step time is how long it takes him to do two full steps. Um, 
or one step with each foot. So if we go, right now he's at 20, so if I end my timeline at frame 20, um, and I play that, right now that'll loop perfectly, because that's how long it's taking him to do one stride. Um, but we can have him do a longer stride, we can have him do a shorter stride, and you'll notice that as I'm dragging these, um, the max stride length down, his velocity is changing. And that's just because in order for him to take that narrow of a stride within this amount of time, he's going to be going this fast. So that's really useful if you have a specific speed that your character needs to be running at, but you want to adjust your animation. You can do that and still keep that velocity number the same um, by adjusting how quickly he was going to take his steps. So I'm going to change that back to 500 where it was and max step time back to 20. So he's running quick. And it's 20. So I want to set my cat motion range. This is actually the range that it will create keyframes for you. So I want that to end at 20 as well. I don't want to uh, make any more than I have to. But if you wanted to have a run cycle that has a little bit of a, you know, four steps are even, and then the fifth step, it has a little hitch in it or something, just to kind of give it some, some character to it. You can totally do that by just making this a multiple of max step time. And you can set that to, um, say, 100. And then I know from frames 80 to 100, that's going to be my variable step. Um, but that's up to you. I don't use that because I'm not an animator, and that's too hard for me. Um, so I just set that to the max step time. That keeps it easy. OK, so then the next thing we can do is we actually have a lot of control over this by going into our pelvis group and chest group. I'll start by opening the chest group here. Um, and we have settings for chest and arms. Um, each one of these settings, and we have a whole bunch of them, we have settings for every single uh, joint in our skeleton. And if we, so for example, our chest has all these different settings for twist, roll, pitch, lift, push. And we have this uh, graph here showing how it's moving over time through that cycle. So the beginning here is frame one, uh, last one is frame 20, and it's showing how the chest is twisting so I'm not terribly familiar with graph editors or how they work. So for me to come in here and just start changing these settings and stuff, it's like that's not a good idea for me because um, I'm going to break things. But what I can do is adjust this scale and adjust the offsets here can kind of do some special stuff for me. So um, let's take a look at our model. Oh, and just as a reference, like I do have it playing the entire time. So we're working on the twist of the chest. So let's really pump this up. Let's go to 400% or maybe even 500. So now you can see he is really twisting while he's running. Um, but we can also offset that if we bring it down and say he's holding a gun and we want him to be strafing sideways for one of his animations. Well, I can bring this down so that he's not twisting very much and let's offset that so that he's offset to the side here. So now he's running, and the arms are doing some weird things, but you can see how that could be used as a base point to get him to do a, a sideways running thing. And likewise, I could offset that the other direction to get him to look the other way. So I'm going to reposition this so that's just in the middle. And I'm going to bump up the scale a little bit so he's doing a little bit more of a run kind of thing. So we have the same thing. We can go into his pelvis and check out his um, twist. Well, let's do roll, I don't know. But we can scale that up so he's really rolling. So you can get a lot of really funny animations and just some stuff that really gives some life to your characters um, by adjusting these settings. Let's see what it looks like backward. Oh, that's weird, he's kind of lumbering along. Um, but yeah, just go through these and that's all I'm really gonna show for them. But you can offset the positions. Um, he can run, oh yeah, check that out. Running backward, or leaning backward, leaning way forward. Uh, he can be leaning, duck down, be up high in the air, all kinds of things. You have a lot of different control over these different motion presets. And there's, uh, you've got controls on the legs, you've got controls on the ankle, chest, arms, how they swing, how much they bend everything you've got control of. 
So it's really cool. And you know that once you have this set, you have it. Um, you have a perfectly looping animation so that the last frame is always going to be identical or nearly identical to the first frame. And that's really good. So it's automatically ready for you to save out and bring into Unreal. So yeah, that's all the further I want to demonstrate in the cat motion layers. They're a powerful tool that can be used to quickly generate nice custom run and walk cycles, especially if you're like me and you're not that great at animating, but you want something unique to use in your games. Between the cat motion layers and creating your own animations from scratch, you can start creating custom movements for this rig, or start doing your own animation practice. In the next video, we'll go over how to take a finished animation from 3ds Max and bring it onto the character in Unreal 4.